transcends race, color, and creed. He's everybody's champion. Under the guidance of legendary promoter Bill Watts, the Junkyard Dog has emerged as a main event superstar in Mid-South, drawing record-breaking crowds for the company. He was the Black Huck Hogan down there. Louisiana, Oklahoma, Arkansas. I mean, he had all those towns just sewed up. Let me tell you something, buzzer wasn't. It ain't but one dog. Being on the road all the time is, well, I mean, yeah, it, can, it can take a toll. It taxes on your body, it taxes on your mind, it taxes mostly on your relationships with your children, with your wife, with your family. You know, an average week was 1,500, 2,000 miles a week. So you're in a car a lot, and you're away from your family a lot. And sometimes a big old fat joint was your solace. Of course, for a dog, it just created more of an appetite. <laughs> we both were experimenting with drugs at the time. I remember J.Y. showing me a jar that he had over 1,000 hits of speed in it, <laughs> you know? And uh, of course, when he came south, it came with him. Yeah. He was already into the speed and into the downers and sleeping pills. Uh, I hadn't gotten into that yet, but uh, I was soon to start. There's a couple times on the road with him. He would always keep his pinky nailed a little bit longer. You know, I look over, I see him, you know, and he was just about to do it. And he looked over at me and he goes, if I ever see you doing this, I'll kill you. All right, you ain't gonna tell me twice. <laughs> kind of like rock and roll. I mean, I, I didn't know wrestlers had groupies. I found that out. It's kind of like you see on TV with these rock stars and stuff. It, it was just like anywhere they went, restaurants, bars. When you got fame like this, you said, uh, you can actually make money. I was what are you talking about? They said, they're, they're, I'm not going to sleep with them for free. I mean, some of these tickets would pay. So I started hanging out with Dog because I got free beer, free food, and got laid. <laughs> And they paid for it. We was in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I was low on money, because at that time, unfortunately, I was involved with drugs. And uh, dogs, I get you some money. I, OK, so I got some girls coming. Like, oh, thank you. The door opened, and these three girls came in. And each one of them gave Dog $100 a piece to get laid by the wrestlers. So anyway, Dog said, uh, he don't do no screwing. He like your feet. So, so he gonna play with your feet. You let him play with your feet. So, so I'm playing with the girl's feet. Dog getting ready to do the girl, and then we hear another knock at the door. He thought it was one of the wrestlers. It was the girl's husband. You know, he wanted to fight Dog, so he did. It didn't last long. Dog beat the hell out of him. The girl stayed. <laughs> Dog was one of the highest paid guys in pro wrestling at that time. He never made under a grand a week. I think he probably averaged more than like two or $3,000 a week. And in a territory that size, that was pretty extraordinary. Do I think it affected him? Absolutely. And I think that was when the drugs got really bad. Dog started off with pot, and that led to cocaine. He just smoked it. Yeah, y'all call it crack now. <sighs> Once he got into the coke, the coke took him. He had to have it every day. Jay Waddy, he didn't care where he was at, he'd just pull it out and do it. On airplanes and everything, man. He got me in trouble one time. They were doing a TNT thing that Vince used to do. He said, I want you to make sure he get there. They got a lure jet for him, the nice jet. So when Dog landed, they got the guy with the limousine to pick us up at the airport. Dogs had a limousine job to go in the ghettos to get some dope. So they driving around. Dog, we gotta get to the building, dog. Found it. He found somebody selling him his dope. The limousine driver had, got, had no idea what was going on. So dog asked, is it okay I smoke? The limousine guy, he thought me a cigarette. The dog said, yeah. He took out his crack pipe and started smoking crack and I was still looking at his like this. <laughs> he don't know what the hell to do. He had to get dog there, but we late. Which means I missed my match. Dog forgot one thing that Thunderbolt Palliser tried to teach all of us black wrestlers. Thunderbolt used to always say, you can't do what the white man do and keep your job. 
By the late 1980s, the junkyard dog is consumed by a devastating drug addiction, and its consequences are felt far beyond the squared circle. He didn't look good. He would talk, but he wasn't that cheerful dog that we knew. He just wasn't the same person. He didn't care what happened. He didn't care at all. I mean, he just... Oh my God, yeah, he was out of control. I remember him sitting there in Madison Square Garden and loading a pipe up and hitting it right in front of everybody. Jay, what are you doing, man? He goes, fuck it, they don't even know what it is. They don't even know what it is. He was just, oh, burnt. Oh, yeah, the dog came out of this hiding place, started to begin to move up and down that ladder once again. And like I said time and time and again, every dog needs a bone to chew on. Of course, he had a drug problem. Everybody was taking drugs back then. I can't throw no stones, I, A to Z. I just never had that addictive type personality. But Dog, he struggled with that. He sank into it. It was more and more and, you know, there was no talking him out of it. Why is he let go from WWF? No shows, the way I understood it. Vince didn't care what you did on the drugs, happened you to go, go, go. But you miss shows, you, you scare on me to do that. I didn't have no idea that he was leaving or anything like that. And that's the way the wrestling business, it was like that. They didn't give you two weeks notice, just tell you, hey, leave. When a guy can't go buy groceries, and you don't have any money, and you haven't seen your family, it's disheartening. He definitely had a great soul. If JYD's story isn't a cautionary tale, then people aren't paying attention. <laughs> 